In this tutorial, we will learn how to manually measure distances, coordinates, and relationships in three dimensions using user-friendly methods and interactive tools in ImagePro Premier 3D. We'll start with a three-dimensional volume that has many different objects in 3D. We've created an ISO surface and counted all of the objects. One of the first and simplest measurements that I'll make is measuring the X, Y, Z coordinates of a point. In my 3D measure tab, in my active tool group, I can find the manual tag. Manual tag will place a point on the surface of my ISO surfaced rendering. If it's difficult to see my points, I can go to 3D options and increase the size of the sphere. Here you see I've increased the size of my point from a small point to a larger sphere. If I decide I want to know the relationship between two objects, I can do so by either selecting the objects or simply drawing a line between them. Using the line tool in the active tools group, I can make many measurements by simply clicking on one object and then the other. Since I have a counted volume isosurface, it will measure the linear distance in three dimensions from isosurface to isosurface. I may, however, be interested in measuring from the center of one object to the center of the other. What I'll do for this is I'll choose two different objects. In the data table, I'll click one, hold control, and then click the other. And in my measurements group, I'll choose to show only the selected. I'll zoom out and pan using my view tool and zoom in. If I ever wish to deselect an object, I can simply click on one of the measurements, hold down control, and click again to deselect. Selecting objects happens in the same way, simply clicking each object individually. Now once I've done this and selected two or more objects, I have relative options that appear. Here you'll notice I can measure center of each object, the center to center distance, or the surface to surface distance. I also have linking options. Here we'll measure the surface to surface distance. And you see a line has been drawn between the two at their closest point. I'll move my objects around and see if I can zoom in on this line. Sure enough, surface to surface has been measured. Now I can also measure the center to center. I'll do so by keeping the two objects selected and clicking this button. To visualize this better, I'll go to my 3D View tab and choose View All. I'll also ensure that my geometry is the XY position. Now because I can't see through my two opaque objects, I'll go to my ISO surface rendering to the color palette and reduce the opacity. This makes it a lot easier for me to see the center of each of my objects and how it has been selected. I'll remove the two measurements that I've just made and show all of my objects again. This time I'll show splitting two objects. In case two objects are touching, it may be important to remove one from the other. In this case, I want to count the larger object, but not the smaller one that shouldn't have been there. By going to my active tool group, I can go to split object. Now this will create two points and make a circumference around my object. The third point is created by my viewing angle. Automatically the split takes place and my objects are recolored to show the difference between the two. If instead of cutting, I want to actually create a circumference measurement, I can do that as well. Using a different example, I can show a lot of objects that might need to be measured in different ways. In this example, I want to measure the circumference of my object, a long tubular structure that might be different diameters along its length. Again, using my viewing angle, I can simply zoom in on this object, go to my active tool, and choose add outline. Again, 
two simple points and my viewing angle. Measurements are drawn into my 3D data table. I have the X, Y, and Z centers of my lines, and I also have the length. If I'm interested in the linear distance along a curved length, such as this one, I can choose my polyline tool to place points along the length. In this case, the more points that I draw, the higher resolution of line that I get. In order to see this more clearly, since it's a linear extrapolation, I can reduce the opacity of my object. Again, in a different example, I can use slicing techniques as we've gone through in different videos to achieve manual measurements as well. In this example, I'll cut away from the side of my tooth using an ortho slice. By doing so, I can see inside of my objects. I can draw a linear distance from edge to edge. Move a bit more and measure again. This allows me to measure distances in three-dimensional space. In addition to measurements on the clipping plane, I can also add measurements that follow the isosurface. Looking from a top perspective of my object, aligning my view with the plane from which I want to create my two points and third point being the angle of perspective. I can choose an active tool by the name of Add Curve. Add Curve will give me two points. I want to measure from the peak to another peak. When I do so, a line will be drawn. This line is drawn following the isosurface that's been created. Based upon my perspective, this line will draw in different directions. To evaluate this powerful new analysis product, Register to receive a 14-day free trial version to run on any 64-bit Windows 7 or 8 PC, at least meeting our minimum hardware requirements. For more information about ImagePro Premier 3D or any Media Cybernetics product, please contact your local reseller or company representative.